Okay, folks. So I have a little bit of moon footage from the other day that I want to share as the moon was going down towards the west and stuff. And I just, I want to try to do a quick video as quick as I can here to just talk a little bit about this whole Hunter Biden gun trial thing. This whole politics thing just seems to be a greater divide and conquer tactic that they've just exploited even more than ever now. And I just, I know some of y'all can say, oh, it's a hypocrite. you went to Trump's rally. Yeah, I did go to Trump's little festival and Trump's rally. And I went there hoping to maybe, you know, try to share a little bit of information about weather warfare and maybe connect with a few people who, you know, care about America and care about humanity and all of that kind of stuff. And, you know, I did pick up on a bobblehead for my father-in-law for Father's Day and, and all of that. But, you know, as far as that goes, I, you know, I have some issues with Trump and him talking about presidential immunity and indemnifying cops and stuff like that. I don't like that kind of rhetoric. I really don't. I don't think presidents should get presidential immunity. And as far as this whole thing with Hunter's gun trial, that is just being used to um, make people feel a little bit better. They're like giving you a little W, a little win, so that maybe you're similar, you know, you're going to simmer down a little bit now because, you know, see, look what we're doing. We don't have a two-tier justice. You know, look, at they convicted Hunter Biden on gun charges and drug related charges and stuff like that. And really, when you think about it, look at the evidence that was really presented, folks. It was based on his laptop and his private communications. The FBI tracked him to like known drug dealer locations and stuff. Like, if you're OK with that, just because it's, it's Hunter Biden and it's somebody that you don't like, just wait till it's used on the people, too. Trust me, they've probably already got the freaking gun laws regulate the regulations already written and scripted for it already, where they're going to re require drug tests for people to own guns. And you'll have to submit to a gun test like every three months or something in order to keep your firearms. And you'll probably have to submit to a psychological evaluation, too, because they talked a little bit about his drug addiction and his mental problems. And I have no doubt he's got some mental problems and it's sick and twisted. It's this, some sick and twisted shit. It's like a sick soap opera going on. But, you know, at the same time, you really have to look at all of the bigger picture here. When it comes to these public figures and their private lives being exposed to the public, I'm seeing a little bit of hypocrisy, especially in the Republican group and the conservative group and the so-called patriots and freedom fighters, where y'all are talking about how Trump's entitled to a private life and he shouldn't have his private communications and his private life exposed to the public for public interest. But yet you're over here celebrating and chanting to lock, you know, Hunter Biden up because of evidence that was provided from his private life. That's none of my business. I really don't care. I'm really wishing I would not have been privy to the whole Hunter Biden laptop shit and the stuff that's on his laptop because it's sick and it's twisted. It's just demented. Uh, but at the same time, do do I want to see them try to apply that same precedent across the board, which they're going to do? No, I don't. If you're fighting for rights and freedoms for all, it's for all, period. There's no buts. There's no ifs, ands, or buts when it comes to the Constitution and rights and freedoms for people to choose, including parents. Parental rights for all, not just some. It doesn't say in there parental rights and, and rights for all, liberty and justice for all, except for those that commit corrupt and immoral acts that the church would deem immoral and goes against your moral code. It doesn't say that. It's for all. And you may not agree with some of the decisions that people make. I don't. I think it's sick. It's disgusting. But I don't have to, I don't have to you know, deal with it. I can certainly try to influence somebody around me that might be making a, a bad decision about something. But to take away their right to choose? No, I'm not for that. And that's what I, that's the hypocrisy I see a lot with a lot of conservatives and the so-called freedom fighters. I see y'all advocating and wanting freedom for all, but then in the same breath, you're over there talking about how, well, that parent, that's sick. That parent shouldn't be allowed to have a kid if they're choosing that for their kids. They should have their kids taken away from them. Well, who are you? Who are you to decide what's right and wrong for parents to decide? And that's, that's sad. That is a sad, harsh reality. And it's disgusting. And I'm not in no way, shape or form advocating for, you know, any of this kind of stuff going on with kids being abused and stuff. Or, you know, it's one of those battles, though, that you're not going to save them all. It's like the war on drugs. It's just never going to end because there's always going to be parents and even teenagers that are going to choose and make certain decisions for themselves that they have a right to choose that is going to send moral compasses just in a tizzy. And it's always going to be that way. You are not going to, to regulate and, and pick and choose what people can and cannot do based on your moral compass. You can't do that. That's hypocrisy. You stand for rights and freedoms for all. It's for all, period. And don't get it twisted. I'm not in support and an advocate for like child human trafficking or anything like that. I mean, shit, here in Nevada, they have legislation and laws that they put in place that actually allows a parent of a teenager 14 years and up to consent to that child participating in the sex worker industry. It's sick. It's absolutely sick and disgusting. But at the same time, if you stand for rights and freedoms for all, it's for all, even for those that choose to sick and twisted shit like that. That's a tough battle, folks. For those of you out there that are spouting off on the social platforms, the social engineering platforms about how you won't stop until you save them all, you're truly, truly naive to the facts and the harsh reality of it because you won't save them all. 
You really won't. The only thing that you'll do is serve as a useful tool to strip away parental rights from parents who make decisions for their children that you don't have any right to take away because they will take it one step further. You give them a, an inch and they will take a mile. The government will do that. They will extend those rules beyond what you want them to regulate and standardize as far as what parents can and cannot do with their kids. They will take full advantage of that. And guess what? The next time that it rolls around where they're telling you they have to do something to your child or you're going to get your child taken away from you, they're going to throw it right back in your face. Well, you were okay with them doing it for this instance. What's the difference here? This is in the best interest of your child that we take your child away from you. And you know, you were okay with it back then. You see what I'm saying? It's a slippery slope. It's a sick, slippery slope. And there are a lot of sick fucks in society. Pardon my French, but there really are. And there always will be. There's always going to be that battle between good and evil. Because it is a very effective dividing tool. It is a very effective tool for dividing and conquering. And so is politics. And, you know, if I was, if I was given a choice, if I absolutely had to participate in politics and vote again, you know, if I was told vote or die, you know, if I didn't have any other choice but to, to pick a pony in the race, I would probably choose Trump. If I had to pick a pony in the race, Trump would be my pony. But I have problems with Trump and I should be able to redress those issues with Trump without having all of these so-called freedom fighters and these people coming forward and just bashing the shit out of me. I don't know how many times I've been called a liberal just because I, I made a simple statement in one chat during a live stream on some, some channel. I'm not even going to bother mentioning it, but um, I just made a simple comment about how, like I said here, because I'm repetitive, I repeated it in the chat. I said, if you stand for rights and freedoms for all, then it's for all, not just those you deem morally acceptable. And oh my Lord, you would have thought I insulted their, you know, their children. They all just went completely ballistic on me and started accusing me of being a liberal and all of this shit. And it's like, don't label me. Don't fucking label me. Don't put me in any category with anybody that is so deeply embedded into the political games and the political circus that they don't even see the fucking clown makeup on their own faces. You know, don't label me like that. I am an individual that believes that we have a basic human rights. It's not granted by these people in charge. It's not granted by these actors and these actresses. It's just something that we are born with. And, you know, I stand up for rights and freedoms for all, not just some, it's for all. And just because I stand up for the rights and freedoms of people that choose things that I wouldn't choose for myself and that I find abhorrent, it doesn't mean that I want them to lose their right to choose. Okay. And that's the bottom line. And when it comes to this whole gun trial thing, the next one that's going to be up is going to be the whole thing with foreign interference and pay to play schemes, which we know the evidence is already there. Why haven't they already been prosecuted? Well, because it's not a convenient time for that right now. They've got to make sure that they keep pushing this Trump thing forward so that they can set the precedent using a popular candidate and a popular actor because they got all y'all all wanting, you know, and it is true. It is kind of a circus show and it is bullshit. It seems like it is bullshit on the surface. It really, really does. And it is kind of bullshit. It's just a shit show. But if you're one of those people that's standing up for Trump to have a right to privacy and all of that stuff too, and all of the stuff going on and presidential immunity, it's going to backfire. And there, and and there's going to come a time when you're going to be there, like trying to advocate to get other people locked up like you have been because the evidence proves that they should be locked up. And you got to question why they're, they're putting forth all of this stuff right now. And the whole gun trial thing, it's perfect timing because now some of these candidates and these people that are winning their elections right now, and today's a voting day here in Nevada, and all these so-called representatives and political people getting elected into these positions now are going to use it to move forward to revamp and reset gun laws that are going to include more psychological evaluations and drug tests for everyday citizens that want to own guns. And current gun owners are going to have to submit to this type of testing too in the future. You watch. that There's going to set the precedent, because, precedent moving forward on it because they have all of these people just wanting to see Hunter Biden fried and burned at the stake for all of his bad, immoral, corrupt doings that he's done. And I myself personally, I think the whole stuff with the pay to play and selling America out on the world stage, if I were to pick and choose something that I would rather see focused on that right there. I would rather see more focus on than, you know, his crack addiction and his sex addiction and all of his, you know, that kind of shit like that. I mean, really, it's all just a shit show. And that's up and coming where they're going to have that trial all splayed out for people to be distracted by too. But I, I do think that there's going to be some more, you know, frilly farces and things like that occurring, more bigger distractions. So just stay mindful, folks, because all of this stuff is just seems like it's a divide and conquer tactics to me. And I just can't, like participate on the same level as other people. Because I see it as if you are somebody that is claiming to be a patriot and you're claiming to be a freedom fighter and you fight for freedom and you fight for constitutional rights for all, but in the same breath, you're wanting to have parents scrutinized because they're making decisions for their children that you don't agree with. And I think it's sick. I really do. I don't think parents should be choosing some things that some parents are choosing for their kids, but they still have a right to choose it. And this was kind of interesting. I was able to capture the moon in the darkness there. It was kind of illuminated a little bit for the camera there. As you could see, I was seeing through the darkness with the camera. But anyway, I just, I would be remiss if I didn't add my 
two cents worth on uh, the whole subject with the gun trial and all this political soap opera that's going on and everything. And just, I see a lot of hypocrisy. There's a bat that was flitting around. I see an awful lot of hypocrisy in a lot of people that claim to fight for freedoms. But at the same time, you're advocating and think that it's okay for the FBI to come in and completely expose people's private lives and hold them accountable for their private communications and their private emails and stuff. You're advocating for it. You don't know it, but you are. Because they got your bad guy on the chopping block. And when it's the other way around, you're hypocrites. I'm just saying. This whole political circus, this seems like a big divide and conquer show. It'll be interesting to see how the rest of it all plays out. Because, you know, if he's found guilty of it, and convicted, he can certainly appeal. And if it goes to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court rules that, you know, the submission of, you know, his data, his tracking data from his communication lines and submission of all of his private information and everything and private communications is okay for the government to use to prosecute somebody and convict somebody, y'all better hope your slate is clean. Y'all better hope that you don't have lint in your pockets and anything in your emails and anything in your private communications. And don't think you can just go through and delete everything and it's gone. Because I guarantee you, they've already created profiles and dossiers on every person. Everyone has got a profile and a dossier that the government has. So Santa sees all, right? <laughs>